The exterior of yourself is usually a scapegoat for like what's going on inside and like your creativity and whatnot. So I think that was really like my big journey was like reframing how I think of um, what's attractive, what's beautiful, who I want to be and how I want to present myself in the world. At some point you make a choice about who you are and what you want. I immediately related to Kat. Um, I read the sides, not even the script, and just in the way that she spoke, in the way that, you know, it's not even necessarily the exact circumstance, but it's just the way she talks and her like description. I remember just calling my agent immediately after reading the sides and I was like, someone's in my head. <laughs> like, I need it, I need to get there, I need to be in there. Like, I will do anything I can to do it. Cause I just like felt so closely, um, like almost attached to it in a way, because Kat is just eerily similar to me in every way possible. First of all, she was a One Direction fan. Um, can't say I didn't do that. <laughs> and in other ways too, and like in the way that she finds community online and finds it her safe space. And like I was very much like a kind of like an invisible kid and people didn't really, um, even like really care to like ask me to like hang out or anything. So it was just online spaces made me feel like seen and heard in a way that I think I understood with Kat. Kat is surrounded by like gorgeous girls who have boyfriends who like do this. They're like having sex and the loneliness of just not feeling like you, you stand out from your group of friends and that they kind of like almost um, take up more space than you in the way that you just don't feel like you can like get into your power because you know you're a floater you um you, you have a few friends here and there and similar to Kat there's like a moment where I was very jaded and cynical because at one point you just kind of you just that's what you embody and that's like what she wanted to do and and how she views the world at this point and Especially when I was growing up, it was like, you know, the 2000s, like late 90s where tabloids and, and like being mean was like really in, you know, it was just like people taking like unflattering pictures of like women at the beach and be like, she gay, she looks like a monster. And that's like a headline. And, you know, I felt really constricted in that. And I was like, I will never do anything unless I can conform to these beauty standards that these people put on me. As I went on and, and, and really just realized that being different than the beauty standard is completely okay and normal and not in like a, you know, everyone's beautiful kind of way. It's like in a genuine, like that is what's attractive. The exciting thing about Kat taking control of her life is that it's, it's not just in the sexual aspect. It's in a way where it fueled this entire like journey slash like reinvention of yourself because, you know, she hasn't had that control. And when she gets a little bit of it, when she starts kind of making those decisions to Cam and, and seek out these like very interesting kind of dynamics with like older men online. It's, it, it makes her feel like she's in control of her sexuality. And not only that, they like like her for it, which is something that I don't think teenage girls really understand, especially if you're like in a space that you're insecure about. And it wasn't like she had a makeover and all of a sudden she's confident. Cause at first I was just like, all right, we are like goth now. Let's do, let's go crazy. And I was like, and he was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Take it down a notch. Like that's, not the point of it. And I was like, you're so right. It's like, not the point is to, you know, now I like wear like eyeliner and like cool like latex and stuff. It's, it's more of like, I am going to take control of myself visibly and take up space visibly and start making decisions that I didn't do before out of insecurity because I have nothing to lose now in that way. That really appealed to me because I feel in a way, obviously not through like camming or like that necessarily, taking control of my own sexuality as like a bigger girl was like a kind of something I needed to do because or else everyone's like narratives of what I was was gonna take over and I'm just like gonna think that I'm not gonna be good enough or worthy or sexy or whatever. I, I approach taking up space in a different way where I grew up with like just like a gaggle of like loud Brazilian women who love to take up space in any room they go in like loud, laughing, my mom talks to everyone and you know I always kind of um, I admired it, but I was also very scared of that. I realized that my coping mechanism for like being uncomfortable in spaces where I feel like I'm maybe, yeah, I'm having a little imposter syndrome is to amp it up even more. <laughs> to amp up like the, you know, one woman show and like cracking jokes, not just like who I am. And before I would be like, this, I'm just so silly, like it's awkward, like everyone hates me. And just realizing like, I, that doesn't even matter. You know, I forget that people really just don't like loud girls or girls who like, are speaking, period, <laughs> you know? <laughs> People just fi find ways to make women want to be smaller in energy and even physicality. It's just like, no matter what, it's just like people 
just want women to be like less and less, whether that be in like less talking, less um, success, less weight, less crazy, less, it's like a, it's layers to it, we're just like small and, and, and just like kind of there, which obviously um, I'm not good at. <laughs>